Hello and welcome. We're back. We're your hosts. My name is Pia Maffei and I'm joined as always by the wonderful Sharissa Bradley, also known as the Doctor of Food. This is Friday Morning Chats. We're here at Artisan's Palette. We're in Temecula. Uh, and we're a little, uh, what would you call us? A little market? I say it's kind of like a the, your best starting health food store. Like, yeah. I like that it's, you know, you've got everything here, and mm -hmm. it's your one-stop shop, really. Yep. You can yep. come in here and say, I've never done this before, I have no idea what I'm doing, where do I start, and this is it. This is your start here. Yeah, love it. Yeah. That's exactly right. So, we get so many people that do come in and don't know where to start or how to start, and a lot of, a lo we've talked about this before, just a lot of confusion around what is clean eating, um, and our title today is, yeah, but it's organic, so it should be clean eating. Yeah. And so that's where a lot of confusion, I think, is, is in the, in the, in the place, in the, yeah. in this just industry, right? Yeah, I agree, because people will ask me, like, oh, I'll wear my shirt, you know, I'm a clean eater, people yeah. will ask me, you know, oh, so that means you don't eat meat, or right. you wash your food, or, you know, whatever yes. it is, so there, this is... I mean, we obviously have the Ten Commandments, so if you haven't checked that out, go to the website, IamACleanEater.com, and you can check out the Ten Commandments for Clean Eating. That'll help give you a little bit of a, you know, little bit, plus we have a right. store on there, so if you're not local, you can check that out too. But this is, the, the confusion is around because there's so much information. Yes. So, and everybody has a different idea of what clean eating is. Correct. So we want to try to break that down today. And again, like Sharissa said, go to our website first. It's www.iamacleaneater.com. Go there, and there's a location called the Ten Commandments for Clean Eating. We are never here to tell you what to eat. Yep. We're here to educate you on the questions to ask about what you're eating. Exactly. Okay? So we want to kind of drill down a little bit today on... Yeah, but you know, what about organic soy? Mm -hmm. But it's like, what about organic corn? Mm -hmm. What about organic wheat? Mm -hmm. um, what's the difference between white rice and brown rice? Mm -hmm. Which one should I eat? You know, so getting a little bit more understanding the ingredients. Yeah. Because when we say, when you start for clean eating, we recommend get a good fat. Always. We got your five okay. pack, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Or, or like, even a, like a little four pack. But, oh yeah, oh like, yeah. So get a good fat, get a good seasoning, mm -hmm. get a good snack. Mm -hmm. Those are the three big ones. Yeah. And then you have optional ones like, yeah, like vinegars. A, yeah, a good treat. I like to yeah. tell people get a good treat because you want to be able to feel like you're not missing out on anything. So you've got your snacky foods, maybe a salty crunch, and a yes. sweet treat. Yes. And there's tons of options out there. I talk I'm regularly with clients on the phone and they'll say, Oh, but I just love to eat cookies. Mm -hmm. So do I. Yes. But I eat clean versions of yes. the cookies. And, exactly. and it's very easy to find and they're a good tastier. one. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. And so we need to and understand. And satisfying. And satisfying. Yeah. So we need to understand what's in those yes. ingredients. So you get a good fat, you get a good seasoning, you get a good snack. Those are kind of the three main yes. things of where to start. But then we say, okay, the first commandment is read the ingredient list. So then they read the ingredient list and it might say this is where some of the tricky parts come into yeah. play. Because it says, okay, on the front it could say, oh, organic popcorn. Yep. Okay. Um, all natural. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at words like this. Yeah, and then else? you flip it over and it'll say uh, organic corn. Yeah, right? organic corn. Uh, sea salt. Yeah. And... And might say then a blend of canola oil or safflower. or safflower or something like that. And then we start to say, hmm, maybe that's not as clean as you think it should be. Just as a quick little like insert, if something says or, so it's got, you know, oil blend or it says canola oil or whatever it is, it's they put that in there because they just buy whatever was cheapest on the market that day, but they never want to change the label. Right. So you don't know which is which is in there and which isn't in there, and it could be a blend of both. It just depends on what was least expensive for them to acquire in large capacities. Right. So, <clears throat> on a broad sense, Sharissa, when we're looking at these things, let's take it from there, which is we've been taught, oh, popcorn's a good snack. Sure. And this one says organic. Yeah. And we've got some other ingredients that are in there. What can we look out for 
um, in reading that label, but then if we do choose that, it says, oh, it's only three ingredients. It's sure. got a, a fat, it's got salt, and yeah. it's got the organic corn, yeah. and I'm eating it. Yeah. Now, how does that impact maybe our, does it impact our hormones? Does it impact our blood sugar level? How is that, those just simple ingredients, yeah. those three? So that's a really good question. It's also kind of a loaded question, okay, right? Sorry. Because No, no, that's good. It's good. Yeah. Um, well, the, the fact that we want to say like at eating one thing affects one thing in our body, that that's a little misguided because when we eat anything, it affects everything. Okay, that's a good point. I love okay? that. So anytime we put anything in our body, everything is going to be affected yes. by it. You cannot stub your toe without every cell in your body knowing that you stubbed your toe. So you can't eat a bowl of popcorn without every cell in your body knowing you ate a bowl of popcorn. Love it. Okay? So corn, just as its own, corn, whether it's fresh off the whatever it is, it's going to create a lot of inflammation. It's a grain. It's very hard on your body to digest the grain. So unless you're taking really good digestive enzymes, really good hydrochloric acid to help your stomach help digest everything, chances are you're going to be promoting inflammation in your gut. If you're promoting inflammation in your gut, it also allows inflammation throughout your whole body. So I have people who will tell me like, I love my popcorn snack, but I also get really bloated. Mm -hmm. That's a bad sign. If you're already showing physical signs from the food that you're eating, there's a lot going on at the cellular level. Okay. So we already have like, you know, we've got, I tell this to people all the time. We've got the whisper, mm -hmm. we've got the voice, we've got the loud, we've got the shout. And then we've yes. got, you know, cancer and <laughs> disease. Exactly. Right. It's like dead. And then we've got like, I call them little taps and dead. then just a smack. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, so when we're already getting the bloating, you know, joint pain, fatigue, all of that, that's the smack, that's the scream. Yeah. Your body's already been whispering. It was whispering when you got a little gas, a little rumble. Right. A little rumble. Yeah, a little maybe constipation in the morning. Maybe it didn't all work properly the next day. Maybe you didn't sleep that well. Those were all the whispers. When you start to get the bloating, the fatigue, the joint pain, the achiness, we're already getting the scream. And you can't do anything without affecting everything, okay? Yeah. So corn, no matter how clean it is, it's still going to have an effect on you, right? Yes. And you can't think otherwise. So things like, you know, even though it's organic soy or organic, you know, corn or organic whatever else it wheat. is. Wheat. This is going into the grain family All the grain now, family, right? right? Yeah. So all of these things still promote inflammation, regardless of the quality at which they were grown at. So unless you're doing, you know, if you're doing wheat that has been fermented, sat for two or three days and risen and grown and like become sourdough. This, yeah, like sourdough and has become this alive thing. Yeah. Then you're then you're not getting it in the right way. Right. Period. I mean, that's that's it. So it's sprouted. It's alive. It's digestible. Otherwise, it's not going to be supportive for you. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this all the time. Every single time you put something into your body, it's going to affect you in some way. And it can either take you in a positive direction, you're getting better cells, or it's going to make you worse, worse cells. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you do it one time or this little bowl of popcorn or this right. one little soy ice cream because it's organic. It doesn't matter. You're still getting a positive or a negative effect. And if it's these things that create negative problems in our body, that's what you're going to get from it. Right. So we've covered the snack on kind of the salt area. So that was one of the three things to start is get a good fat, mm -hmm. get a good seasoning, mm -hmm. get a good um, snack. Mm -hmm. So I also hear, you know, oh, I only do 90% chocolate. Oh, cacao? Yeah. Or, oh, interesting. You know, and so that's another thing we get. I said, yeah, but does it have cane sugar in it? Yeah. And so what... And, and what else in, to and bind what, it. Right. And what else is in it? Yeah. So that's another, <laughs> excuse me. Thing where people are thinking, oh no, I don't want to deal with the 70% over there that mm. only has three ingredients, mm. which is true cacao mm -hmm. paste, cacao butter, and then a sweetener. That's, just, that's so frustrating because, first of all, if you're doing chocolate, look at the label. Mm -hmm. Is it cocoa yeah. or is it cacao? Right, that's cacao a big difference. Uh -huh. Has anti-inflammatory properties. Cacao helps with um, anti. Uh, oh my gosh, free radicals. It's an antioxidant. It's an anti-inflammatory. Cocoa, even at 90%, isn't giving you the same effects. Right. If you've got 90% cocoa with soy lecithin in it, you've increased your estrogen levels and increased your inflammation. 
without doing anything good for you. And usually it has cane sugar. So Almost it's, always. But it's all organic. And yeah. It's like, well, again, it doesn't matter that that food type is organic. If it has those ingredients in it, it's still going to impact you. Yes. There's just things yeah. that should be on your list of I never eat. Right. And things that like I always eat and I occasionally eat. And for me, soy is on my I never eat list. Right. Regardless of whether it's organic, non-GMO, whatever, because we're already so estrogen dominant, we don't need to add in any more, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Right. So it doesn't matter that it's organic soy. Mm -hmm. Organic soy is still going to create and promote if estrogen increased in the body. Right. Estrogen increase in the body means a natural decrease in testosterone. So if you have a husband or significant other or a man who's watching the video and you're wondering like why isn't everything working properly? Well, you're probably getting a lot of soy in your diet. Mm -hmm. The soy is blocking your ability to create testosterone. So those things are going away. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that it's organic, it's still going to create it's the still, problem. It's still, right. So that's on the uh, snack base. Yeah. We did a sweet and a salty, and so even though these are things 90% all natural, organic, only three ingredients, it doesn't matter, right? Doesn't so matter. then we also say get a good seasoning. This mm -hmm. could be a sauce, this could be uh, a hot sauce, this mm -hmm. could be a ketchup, yeah. um, a marinade, this could be a, a seasoning. Sauce. Yeah. So, Let's take it as a seasoning because okay. in the store here and online at www.iamacleaneater.com, if you're following, you go there and you'll see we've got all these wonderful seasonings from a company called Teeny Tiny Spice mm, Company. They're so good. They're awesome. The yeah. blends are awesome. They're all organic. And this is where it's like, okay, this is good. They're all organic, yeah. right? Because it's all herbs. Yeah. Um, so when you go to, you might say, well, gosh, really? I get Mrs. Dash and, or I use a, like one of those bouillon cubes. Uh, this is how I add flavor to my meals. Sure. Okay. So what are in some of those ingredients yeah. that are common yeah. that might just, and, and innocuous, right? Oh, they might yeah. think, oh, it's just a seasoning. That's sure. all there is in sure. it. So and, why would I have to worry about it? most people don't look at the ingredients of the seasonings because right. you've been using the same steak seasoning, yes. right? McCormick yes. steak seasoning or Mrs. Dash no salt added. Right. Or you know, you've been used you're so used to it that when it runs out in your cupboard you just go and buy the next one. You don't even look to see if right. the ingredients have changed from three months ago when you bought it before, which yeah. most likely they probably have. Yeah. Right? The They've taco added seasoning. certain things. Oh absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um and these things are so simple to make on your own and find better alternatives, all of this. But the sneaky ingredients and in seasonings this for some reason really bothers me. Like okay, tell me. really bothers me. So in order to get you hooked on the seasoning, because yeah. they want you to keep using it, of they course. want you to come back and do yeah. more. They put sugar. Ugh. Almost every one of those blended seasonings have sugar in them. Yeah. When you add sugar to a spice, it makes it clumpy. In order mm. to keep spices from clumping, they put corn. Okay. So you're going to see uh, maltodextrin, which is corn, uh, p uh, you know, powdered corn, mm -hmm. um, in the seasoning. So you'll see maltodextrin and some form of sugar. Uh, that's to keep you coming back for more and to keep it from clumping. So there's It'll a, say anti-caking agent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and they're typically within the first couple of ingredients. So if you don't know this already, ingredients are written in the order of the amount used. Mm -hmm. So the first ingredient, it's the most in it. So if you look at like almond milk, the first ingredient is water because it's three cups of water to one cup of almonds. So there's more water than almonds, so water than almonds. Right. So the typical on these seasonings is that sugar and the, mal and the maltodextrin come before any of the other seasonings. Cool, cool. How bizarre. If you're yeah. getting taco seasoning, you expect that you'll see cumin and cayenne and maybe salt and maybe some chili of these powder. chili powder absolutely but that's not the case you're going to get maltodextrin cane sugar or some form of sugar and then you'll see the rest of the ingredients yeah so that's really important to watch out for because and this is something we think like oh but Charissa what about the 80 20 rule mm -hmm. can't I just consider my my Mrs. Dash or my McCormick as my 20%? Well, no. No. Because you're still creating inflammation in the body. Something as simple as a quarter of a teaspoon of taco seasoning in your beautiful taco meat with your onions and all your good stuff on your nice, you know, bowl or whatever that you're putting it on was ruined. 
because now yeah. you're promoting inflammation. Now you're promoting poor cells, bad cell replenishment, all of these things by that little tiny bit. Even something like taking a little step outside of our outside of our seasoning talk here, a little bit of canola oil on your mm. fish mm -hmm. that ruins it. Yeah. It creates inflammation in the body. You're not going to get absorption of the foods that you're doing really good. Yeah, we're, we're so proud of next. you. Yeah, yeah, next in two weeks we're going to have um, a really great interview. We'll get to talk a little bit about pasture raised and conventional raised. If you're doing really good quality meats and then you're cooking it in soybean oil. Yeah. You've or ruined, marinating or it. Marinating that, that, that's, it. My, that's my that's my yeah. yeah. So, like, but I want to get into it. it in our fat in our, in yeah. our just right now when we're oh, talking. Oh yeah, yeah, please. So, so um so watch for those ingredients and it's it's so silly to not just go get the, you know, get the cumin, get the coriander, get the chili powder. Get them all separate where they don't add any other ingredients. Right. Check the ones you have in your pantry Some and do, throw though. them away. That's the thing. Oh yeah. Some do. But I mean, check. Check, check, check because it should just have that item, but a lot of times too, then it's just the the seasoning the herb, but then it's not organic. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why like the, the what we have in the, in the store is because all the herbs, everything is organic. Yes. Uh, and this is where it's like safe organic, yes. you know? And the price difference, yeah. it doesn't make sense to me that you would buy a $6 bottle of, you know, basically sugar and corn yeah. versus maybe a 9 or $10 bottle of something that has all organic, clean herbs and spices that's going to elevate your meals as well as not hurt you at all. Right. Right? right. That's the point. We don't want to hurt you at all. And you don't need the sugar and things like that. The only reason that they put that in there is for the addiction factor. Sugar is yeah. very, very highly addictive. And you're wanting more of the seasoning isn't because you want the flavor. It's because your brain is being triggered. The sugar. Oh, that sugar, I want more. Yeah. And that's true for sauces. So when we oh, get yeah. into barbecue sauces yeah. and <laughs> other type of um, dressings and stuff like that. So these are things generally that I find people don't really look at the labels because it's just common. You're you're doing the supermarket, mm -hmm. you know, run and you're like, yeah. this is what I buy every week. Yeah. It's just a routine. Oh, yeah. So look for those ingredients. So we went through the snack. We did a, a crunchy, salty one mm -hmm. with the popcorn. We did a sweet one with the mm -hmm. chocolate. We're now talking about seasonings because these are tips, right? Yeah. These three things, if you start these three things but choose the clean ones, you'll see after three months yeah. your whole pantry will be clean. Yeah. Then the last one here we want to talk about is a good fat. Yes. Okay, so the good fat would be more like a cooking fat or a fat that you add onto your... Um, meals mm -hmm. so my journey personal journey for the past now eight months has been to become more fat adapted which is how do I incorporate more fat into my drinks throughout the day so um, as I'm continuing to work long hours uh, I'm not Oh my God! Where's my next meal? Mm -hmm. I, where am I gonna eat? Mm -hmm. How am I gonna eat? You're not ready. So, you're not. You don't need exactly. it. Exactly. I don't need it. My brain is working. I'm not exhausted. Yeah. So that's part of my journey is to become more fat adapted. Now, two years ago, that was not part of my journey. No, because okay? you have to clean it up. You yes. have to get the order right, and then exactly. as you're fine tuning and tweaking things, that's when you get to do like, oh, I'm gonna do more fats or less protein or more, you know, whatever yes. it is. Yeah. For for yourself and what exactly. feels good for you. So now we have a lot of people in two and a half, three years ago, we were talking about keto mm -hmm. and th this was like very green mm -hmm. around people that were coming in the store. Now it's every other person coming in that is trying to be keto and that's great because at least you start somewhere on your uh, journey. But this, this segues into the fat that we're talking about is a lot of people think that this is a license yeah. to eat a 16 ounce ribeye steak, industrial grade, with a pound of Land O'Lakes on it, which is, you know, nasty And a melted butter. cheese tortilla. And oh, yeah. You see these? <laughs> no! They put cheese like on a sheet tray, oh, God. melt the cheese until it's a taco, and then fill it with meat and eat it like a cheese oh. taco. The problem is it's conventional cheese. Yeah. It's not like raw cheddar, right. like any, so you're getting all kinds of hormones, um, the antibiotics. I mean, then we get into the, I mean, we can get into a dairy conversation on a whole other day. That's a whole conversation. But now 
you're pumping in toxins, <laughs> like pumping them in. And people are like, but I feel so much better. You feel better because you're not eating the other toxins that you were eating. Right. Right. You're not eating the candy bars. You're not eating the bag of chips. You're not eating the McDonald's. So that's going to make you feel better. Right. But, but it's not sustainable. No, it's not sustainable yeah. because right. you're still doing all the bad things right. without, it's not clean. It's yeah. not clean eating. You can right. 110% do keto clean. Oh, and we sure. are happy yeah. to help you do that. Yes. And if you're trying to do a clean keto, comment below, and we'll um, yeah. we'll message you and help you give you give you some really good tips. Um, there's tons of good clean keto recipes that incorporate good vegetables that you can still be fat consuming with getting the good good protein into without overloading the toxins. But the way people are doing it now is so it's so disturbing. Right. It's so disturbing. So when we say get a good fat yeah. for one of our ways to start clean eating, we generally mean um, like an avocado oil, mm -hmm. macadamia nut oil, MCT oil, mm -hmm. uh, olive oil, um, ghee mm -hmm. over 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 um, even grass fed butter. Okay. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. you can go like. No land lakes for sure. One step above have you that. Ever, I, I feel like as a challenge to those of you who have conventional butter in your fridge, mm -hmm. go get grass fed butter. Just yes. as just, just as a as an ex, step. just as a um, an experiment. Open the two butters next to each other. Lando Lakes is like almost white. Yes. And Kerrygold and all of these, you know, the uh, Vital Pro, uh, Vital Farms Vital came Farms, out with uh -huh. one. Um, they're almost orange. It's just the difference in color, texture, and taste will blow your mind. Yeah. And it's not much different in price. Right. It really yes, is. It's not that. So, big. like, I mean, the next step up is getting a grass-fed ghee, so that you're not worried about yes. the lactose and the casein. But just as a little a little bump up, next time you're at the grocery store, mm -hmm. Costco, Trader Joe's, Sprouts, every everybody has the yeah. grass-fed butter now. It's so popular. Just buy one and open it up next to the butter that you have now. And I guarantee you, you'll never be able to go back. Yeah. It just looks it's, gross. It's what we call industrial pasture, okay? Yeah. But it's better than organic. It's definitely better than in, uh, regular industrial yeah. food. And then the top, you know, when you're ready to bump yeah. up again, yeah. would be a good quality grass-fed ghee yes. at that point, you know? This is like our conversation when we talked about the RX bars. You can go back yes. through our videos and check out the RX bar conversation. Um, it's not an organic bar. No. We still sell it because it's a step up from Pop-Tarts. Yes. Or a step up from... Yeah, exactly. So if you're going to do, like, let's bump it up a notch. Let's take it to the next level. Just look. Yes. Just look. Right. I yes. mean, it's yes. just an incredible, just, I mean, and we can talk about this next week when we talk about um, the meats and things, but get a pasture raised egg and open it up next to a conventional egg. Conventional right. egg yolks are like pale, pale yellow. Mm -hmm. Pasture raised yolks are bright orange. Yeah. So bright. Yes. And they change seasonally and you'll right. see them change yes. as it gets colder and as it gets warmer. and. Regular conventional eggs you buy in the grocery store never change. Right. They're always that pale, icky yellow. You know why? It's the exposure to the D3. That's so interesting. It's the exposure the to the sun. And then that's, that's what makes the and real yolk protein so yellow and orange. Wow. So the eggs that we have in the store from the farmer that I get, and it's just so amazing that I learned show so much from These from don't him. even have to be refrigerated. These are beautiful, and they're so orange they're almost red inside yeah. and they're silky the texture yeah. is completely different so this is what we call true pasture different from the industrial pasture that you mm -hmm. would get in the, in the supermarket store, yeah. but that is definitely better up. than the organic or industrial level food and like so, you and I are always saying just make the next step up yeah just one step one up. step up yeah and, yeah. and then yeah. grow with it like yes. you don't have to be where we're at right now it took me years to get to yeah. where I'm at. He has been on this journey for four years. I've been on yeah. it for three years. Like we are, we are still incrementing, yes, but I started exactly. with throwing away the Lando Lakes, throwing away the canola oil and switching it out for a good, hot, hot, good quality fat and mm -hmm. the good eggs. Like you just make the little baby steps yes. and then you'll get here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just keep moving forward. So that finally is our, uh, last basically tip is 
get a good fat, but know what makes a good fat, yes, right? Yes. So that's the part of tying that back into the Ten Commandments, which is let the ingredient list guide you, but if you don't know what to look for, then you're like, mm, I don't know, maybe it is better. And then you could get tricked by saying, but it says organic, mm. so it must be better. And then we're like, mm, you got to dig a little deeper. Yeah. I remember one time I was talking to you, Sharissa, yeah. and you had explained to me, you Sharissa doesn't eat um, nightshades. Correct. And nightshades are anything like tomatoes or peppers, not mm -hmm. black pepper, but yeah. peppers, eggplant. Mm -hmm. And you had said, well, it's not that if I eat the tomato, I'm going to like, you know, roll over and die. Right. I'm not allergic. You know, I'm not allergic to it. But it carries antibodies mm -hmm. that will, and if the more this, the more of these that I'll have in my body, the more toxic I'll become, and the sicker I'll get. Exactly. Right. It's so over can you, time. Can you explain that a little bit? Because I yeah. found that to be so, so important to okay. understand on this journey. Yeah. So I like pieces. I avoid all nightshades. Every now and then I'll do like you know a chimichurri sauce that has red peppers in it, something right. like that. But very, very rarely. Um, and the reason is, I like Pia said, I won't get sick from it. Sometimes I'll feel it in my tonsils a little bit, like okay. they'll get a little swollen and I'll know, oh, I had a few nightshades. But the problem is, I have autoimmune disease. If you have autoimmune disease, this is something that's very important to hear. So I don't eat nightshades because nightshades carry the ability to create antibodies. Okay, so if I eat tomatoes, it produces more antibodies in my body. These will build up over time. Antibodies are not a scary thing if you don't have autoimmune disease. They are what make you not get a cold or what are keeping you from getting this horrible flu. Mm -hmm. They're not a bad thing. They keep record of what came into your body and they attack things that are foreign. When you have autoimmune disease, your body sees its own tissue as foreign and it starts to attack. Mm -hmm. When you have a buildup of antibodies, they will attack their own system, okay? okay? So if I have celiac disease, which I do, and I eat a bunch of nightshade foods, which I have in the past been eating nightshades, that antibody creation goes up, and over time, it will create more and more of an attack. I am of the mind that I want everything that I put in my body to help heal me, nothing that's gonna hurt me more. So if I eat a bunch of things that are nightshades and create a bunch of antibodies, I am promoting a system that attacks itself. Mm -hmm. So again, when you're doing any of these things, canola oil, the conventional foods versus or industrial, or sorry, organic foods, you're creating more and more toxicity, more attack, more of the ability yeah. to get sick. Yeah. So when you're eating the canola oil and it creates inflammation in the gut, that inflammation isn't going to cause problems right away. It's the buildup over time that now we have leaky gut. Now we have the possibility for autoimmune disease. We can get leaky brain, which causes brain fog. If you're one of those people who's walking around like, I can't make decisions, I don't know what it's I'm not doing. Coming to me fast it's not enough. coming to me fast enough. That's blur. called brain fog. And what that means is that we have a leaky blood brain barrier. So that's inflammation allowed in the brain. Yeah. That's very dangerous. Yeah. This is where Alzheimer's comes from. This is where dementias come from. And it's this model of disease that follows that whisper, loud, shout, yes. scream. You know, that's the model of smack. disease, the smack, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to get there. And if we're already there, we got to take these things out that create those problems in the first place. We got to roll it back. We got to roll it back. Rolling back. Absolutely. Yeah. And it might so, take more time. It so, does. yes. Yeah. So, that, what she said, I hope you picked it up, is it's the build up over time. So, there are so many people that come in and say, oh, I don't have a problem with that. I can eat that. I've, that's never made me sick. And I think what you, this is why we really promote an elimination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Sharissa does an amazing class here. It's the last Thursday of every month about elimination. Yes. Okay. So it's so important to say, if you'll only know if something impacts you, if you eliminate that item for a period of time, yep. generally 30 days, sometimes a little bit longer, and then when you reintroduce it, how does that impact you? Yeah. That's the only way, right? It's the only I mean, way. It's the, the only way the to only know way. because you could be saying, oh, but I, I eat oatmeal every single day of my life and I don't have a problem with oatmeal. But, the pro but then they have brain fog right. and they have bloating yeah. and they have constipation and, and I think all these other symptoms, the right? Problem, yes, the problem is that we're not thinking symptoms 
based on what we ate. So we ate the oatmeal, we feel okay all day long, yeah. but you don't realize that when you wake up in the morning and you're really stiff and right. it takes you a little while to warm up, that's a, that's a symptom. Yes, that, right. When Listen you get the that. headache or the tired yeah. or the fatigue at three o'clock in the afternoon and you feel like everybody gets that, I need a second cup of coffee. Yeah. That's a symptom. Right. All of these things, these are the whispers. Mm -hmm. They're going to get louder. These things need to be rolled back. We've already shown, we've already proven scientifically that these things don't break down. They don't digest. They create inflammation. Mm -hmm. Inflammation creates leaky gut. Leaky gut equals all of the other right. problems. So maybe you're just at the whisper right now. But if you're just at a whisper, great. It's only gonna take a little bit of time to roll back. Mm -hmm. If you're already at the shout, it might take a couple years to right. roll it back. Yeah, yeah, but but it, it can be done. Absolutely. So to recap, we talked about three places to start, okay, to, for clean eating, mm -hmm. which is get a good snack, mm -hmm. sweet, salty, or both. Mm -hmm. Get a good seasoning, whether that's a dry seasoning or uh, a dressing, and get a good fat, and don't be, uh, seduced by because it says organic that it's still going to be good for you you still have to read that ingredient list which is commandment number one yes. so to review the commandments please go to www.iamacleaneater.com that's commandment number one let the ingredient list guide you you can read our blogs Sharissa has some wonderful information on there for all blog material and then we have a wonderful shop that you'll be able to see all the items that we have here in our store as well are online so we're gonna sign off today please watch us again for another Friday morning chats we're your hosts I'm Pia and Sharissa thank you so much we'll see you next week we'll see you next time